In this video, we're going to save an object of a Kotlin data class type to a Firebase database. Now, this builds on a couple of previous videos that I've created. One is simply creating a data class called Specimen and populating it from an activity or a form in Jetpack Compose. And another video is integrating Firebase into our application. So I'm assuming you've seen those two before you watch this video. Let's start in our activity class. So we have a button with an on-click handler here, and the on-click is doing a couple things, but one thing is it's creating a specimen object based on the data that the user entered into the activity. Additionally, our activity is calling on a view model with live data that's interacting with several other classes, including service classes that interact with DAOs, that interact with retrofit, and also the view model is where we are going to put our Firebase logic. Let's start by creating a function on our view model to save this specimen object. Note that it recognizes view model, but it does not recognize the save function because guess what? I'm calling it, but I have not created it yet. That's easy to fix in our IDE alt enter and then create member function. And that will take us right over into our view model. It gives us the correct signature and now we simply need to implement it. But before we implement it, we need to initialize Firebase. First thing we need to do is create this latent var firestore of type Firebase Firestore. I created that in a previous video. Uh, if you don't have that, you know, just go ahead and add that now. That's the only thing in here that references Firebase. And that was simply to make sure that I had my build set up correctly. Now we need to initialize this and several other Firebase items. And in a view model, we can do that with a simple init block. So we have init, open curly, close curly. And that acts just like a constructor would back in the days of Java. So inside of this, I say Firestore, which references that variable on line number 17, and then Firebase Firestore.get instance. Underneath that, Firestore dot Firestore settings, and we use a builder for this, which is common if we have something that has a lot of complicated settings, like selecting our options on a car we're buying, something like that, where there are a lot of different combinations we could use. In our case, though, we just need a plain vanilla Firebase Firestore instance, so this one's going to be fairly straightforward. Simply Firebase Firestore settings dot builder dot build. Now we can go back to our save function. We start by invoking Firestore dot collection, which is where we want to save our specimens. I'm going to call this collection specimens, which makes sense because, hey, that's where we're going to save our specimens. Now, one trick, though, I need to actually create that collection called specimens. And let's remember how this is going to work in Firebase Database. We start at a root level, and then we define our initial collection, which here I'm going to call specimens. After that, we can store a series of specimen objects as documents. Remember that we're going to come back and use that word document again in just a few moments. That's as far as we need to go in this video. In future videos, we'll see that those documents can have further collections, and those collections will point to further documents. But at this point, we're just concerned with these first couple layers right here. So let's start by creating our database. And notice there are two different options with very similar terms. Real-time database, which was the first generation database, that was kind of like just a, a NoSQL JSON storage, document storage mechanism. And then Firestore database, which has that alternating collections document sequence that we just saw. So let's go ahead and choose create database. Now, we are eventually going to add Firebase authentication to this, which is going to allow us to allow only writes from users who have logged in. But that's a future module we haven't gotten to yet. So let's start in test mode. Test mode is going to allow anybody to read from or write to our database without authenticating. We don't want to leave it here too long, so this is time limited. It will expire in about a month. But hopefully before that, we'll wire up authentication, and we'll handle authentication that way. Let's go ahead and choose next. Let's choose a region. U.S. Central works for me. So uh, this is one that once we choose it, we can't change it. Let's go ahead and choose that. And now it's going to create our database instance we have our database. So I'm going to start with a collection because remember that's what hangs off of that root element. And we'll call the specimens, which matches what I just put in our source code. And we choose next. Now it wants us to create a document. Uh, I'll go ahead and choose auto ID. It gives us a default identifier. 
and I can say plant name, eastern, red bud, something like that. We can fill out more details there. It just wants us to start with something. What we'll see when this video is over is that we will have another document here which represents the specimen that we're saving. Nonetheless, this gives us enough to continue with our IDE now, now that we have this collection called specimens. Now back to our IDE, and we can pick up where we left off. One option is to say dot .document and then dot .set and pass our specimen in here. That will work for us, but it's to our benefit to do things a slightly different way. The reason is this document can contain a unique identifier, which we could make up, or if we leave it empty, it will create a unique identifier for us, and we might be interested in what that unique identifier is. If you remember our Firebase console, the unique identifier is this value here. Let's go ahead and have that create one for us. So I will create the document like so, and I will save that into a variable called document. Now I can say specimen, specimen ID equals document dot ID. And that's going to take that Firebase generated unique identifier and save it into my specimen object. Next, I simply need to save this specimen to Firebase, which I've not done yet, so we'll do it right now. Again, referencing that document variable, we're going to say document.set, and then we'll pass in our specimen. Let's store the result of that into a variable named handle, because we can take that variable and we can add an on success listener and an on failure listener. And that simply takes a lambda. We can put a lambda in here so we can say log.d. This will give us enough to set a breakpoint to confirm that everything's working for us. Do Firebase and then document saved. So this is essentially success. If we've gotten to this point, that means that it was able to store our specimen up to Firebase. Next, handle dot add on failure listener, which is going to be if something goes wrong. And once again, this can take a lambda expression in curlies. Now remember that a lambda, if it accepts one parameter, it will store that in a variable called it. And this is one of those cases. In this case, that variable is very important because it's details about the exception. And also remember in Kotlin, if we're within a double quoted string, we can inject a variable just by prefacing it with a dollar sign. So that will put the exception text into our log message. And essentially, that's what we need. Let's watch what happens now as we create a new plant. If you take a look, I hit save and it didn't take too long for this to come up. And if you look here, we have November 1998, a lovely plant, University of Cincinnati, plant ID, which it pulled from our plant field, plant name, and then specimen ID. So you see, that was very fast to update. Let's make one more enhancement to our view models save function before we finish this, though. At this point, we're always creating a new document, which means every time we hit save, we're going to get a new plant. What if this plant, we simply want to update? Firebase is pretty smart about that, because if it sees that we're creating a document function call without passing in a document ID, it knows to create new. But if we pass in a valid document ID there, it knows that it is updating an existing record. Or if that record doesn't exist, it will create a new record with that ID. So let's get a bit smart about how we assign this document. There's a neat trick with Kotlin that we can do, and that is we can assign a variable from an if-else test. So we start with a variable like we have here. Then we have the assignment operator. And then to the right of the assignment operator, we have an if-else clause. And the last line from each case is what gets returned and assigned to the variable. In other words, let's say I did this. Now, I'll still need an else part, but and that's why it's redlining here. But nonetheless, this is effectively the same as what we had just a few moments ago. If true, which is always going to be true, then evaluate this line and take the result and assign it to document. So let's make this if test a bit more enhanced. Let's make the if test see if the specimen ID is null or is empty. If either of those are true, then this is a brand new specimen and we need to create a new document object out of it. But if not, let's assume we are updating an existing specimen. And there we go. So if it's not null, if it's not empty, then we're effectively fetching an existing specimen. 
and getting the document for that and storing that into this document here. If it is null or it is empty, that means we have a brand new specimen, we're creating a brand new document, and we're storing it here. So this line takes care of both the create function and also the update function. And the rest of what we have here stays the same. Now, we won't be able to test this out just yet because every time I press the save button, it's creating a new specimen. But we will appreciate this in a few more videos where we are retrieving data from Firebase and we're going to let our UI update existing records as well as creating new. So that's a bit forward thinking, but nonetheless, I wanted to go ahead and do it so that you could see that as a best practice. So in this video, we've seen how to save an object of a Kotlin data class to a Firebase database. And we've also created the Firebase database brand new from the ground up using the console. As always, I hope this video was helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.